I'm Algernon Cash, and you're locked in. Welcome back. Um, so glad to have you here. Thank you for joining us right here on WTOB. Every Sunday morning, you get a chance to lock in and learn more about what's going on in your backyard. And um, if, if you've been a, a member of my audience for quite some time, you know how passionate I am about the community. And I just think so many of us have to do our part to take care of our community is certainly not enough for us to just sit here and make money, but we also need to make sure we're donating time and talent and energy back into the community. And the reason why I'm so passionate about our community is because I'm someone who grew up and really relied and, and counted on a lot of people in our community to do the right thing, or I wouldn't be in the place that I am today. And, you, you know, I was recently reminded about something that, you, you know, as you're a child, when you're going through um, traumatic episodes, you have a, a way of sort of displacing some of this over time, you, you, you forget. Um, but I recently got reminded just how many kids across this country go to sleep every night without a bed. And that, that's something I think a lot of us, most, most of us don't think about. And when I got reminded of it, um, it made me think back to when I was growing up and I didn't have a bed. And if, you, um, if you're in the same situation I was in, then you may remember your parents, or in this case, my grandparents, they would make what they called a pallet, which, which is basically a bunch of quilts that you put together and I would sleep on the, the pallet. Or if I was visiting other family members, other family houses, then most times they didn't have a bed, they would make you a pallet. And so literally millions of kids experience this all over across the country. And it is something that also happens right here in our backyard in Forsyth County. And I recently had a chance through actually Mayor Allen Joins. I was having breakfast with Mayor Joins and he was telling me about a program in town called A Bed and a Book. And it's a program where they are working to not only give kids a bed to sleep in, but also a book. And if, if you grew up poor like me, then you, you just know how powerful a, a good book can be because it can really allow you to use your imagination and see beyond what you're going through. So I wanted to invite um, the founder of A Bed and a Book onto the show to talk about what she's doing. Annalisa Wall, did I get that right? You did. You did I, I was not. Right. I was practicing it like in my head over and over to make sure I said it right. But Annalisa Wall is the founder of A Bed and a Book. Um, she's based right here in Forsyth County, and she is working overtime to make sure kids have a, a bed to sleep in. Annalisa, tell us a little bit about this work you're doing and, and how you got involved. So Algernon, um, how I got involved was um, through um, my job and local work that I do. I identified a need of kids that were sleeping on the floor here in, in Forsyth County. And as I did the research, I found out that tonight, 2 million American children have no option but to sleep on the floor. And our beautiful town of Winston-Salem isn't immune to that. So immediately I um, went into action. What would it look like to provide beds for kids? And um, together with a group of volunteers who still um, has worked with the organization and continues to be powerhouses, we put together um, uh, bed uh, building uh, opportunities and um, uh, our, our why is obviously uh, the people we've spoke to and we've seen the situations of kids um, sleeping, five kids on you know one tattered mattress on the floor. We see um, children taking their own clothes and they pile up their clothes to have something soft to lay on and cover up with a towel. We see kids that maybe are sleeping on an air mattress that's had a hole in it that will deflate during the night. Kids sleeping head to foot on a couch. Um, kids sharing a mattress with their parents because that's the only bed that's in the home. And we wanted to change, change that. And that's where we went into action because um, we believe the power of a bed provides not only rest, but dignity for the children. You know, it's uh, gives them a chance to learn and excel better in school the next day, having rested. Uh, so, well, I, I think what you're doing is is critically important. That's a big number. Over two million kids, you know, across the country don't have a bed to sleep in, and you know, it's really just something I think so many of us probably just take for granted. You know, every night. You know, I, I could speak for myself. A lot of times, I'm not necessarily thinking about how many kids um, don't have a bed to sleep in when I lay down and, and rest my own head at, at night. We have a lot of conversation about, you know, adults and certainly some of the, the um, homeless initiatives that we have going on here in our, our community, but, but sometimes that conversation doesn't land on kids. And I think it is important. I think the work you're doing is important simply because we, a lot of these kids that come from some of these communities and neighborhoods, 
they also tend to have problems at school. And, you know, I try to remind people it can be a bit difficult to focus on learning and paying attention to your teacher um, when you haven't had a bed to sleep in the night before or you haven't had a good meal um, before you came to school. When you when you all um, go out, you, you first of all, you put the beds together so you assemble them, but then you also deliver them to the home. What's the what's the typical response or reaction from that child or, or even the, the parent? So when we arrive with the beds, um, the first thing we do is we meet the kids, we tell them who we are, we find the space, and the kids are the first ones usually to run in and say, here's my room, here's my room. And um, then we start bringing the bed in and we, we set down the kids um, on the couch or whatever area they prefer outside. And we show them the books we've got for them. Each one is um, donated by Bookmarks, which has been wonderful. They've partnered with us to provide not only just any books, but books that these kids particularly want to read that they're interested in, that gets them excited to, to learn and want to further enrichment through reading. And so we, we hand them the books, we have them choose one book, we read to them. And while the beds are being assembled, you know, we've kind of have them distracted in this learning. Then we go to the bedding and they get to see the bedding that not only are we able, thank goodness to the people that the donors who provided bedding, but we can provide bedding, you know, like Spider-Man and princess bedding and things that the kids are like, wow, this is really mine. This is so cool. I love princesses. How did you know? You know, we tell them, well, we talked to your mom and, and she let us know and someone in the community that loves you and cares about you pick this for you. And so they come in and they help us sometimes uh, use the impact wrench or the screwdriver to, you know, learn how, how that tool works. And that's fun. And then at the end, a lot of times they'll get on the top bunk and help us make the beds, which is so cool. And the first thing they do once the bed's finished, we bring them in is they just, they just smile, the, the biggest smile. Algernon, you would think we were bringing a playground or we were bringing, um, some cool bouncy house when in fact it's just a basic need that every child should have they are so happy to have this basic need they come and hug us and they immediately immediately every time it never fails one of the children would take off their shoes because that's you know appropriate when you get into bed and jump into the bed if it's three o'clock in the afternoon if it's you know, four or five, they're like, I'm ready for bed, you know, and so it's like, that's really cool, and that's the goal of this, is we want you to get in this bed and sleep soundly, but it's only six o'clock, so let mom fix dinner, have a good bath, and then get it back in bed with your books, keep your books right here on your bed, and you can read yourself to sleep, and they just can't wait, and the parents what? tell us, you know, what a difference it's made in these kids' lives to have these beds, as you touched on a minute ago, the mom say, the kids actually wanted to go to bed. We didn't have to say, come on, come on, it's time to get on this, you know, tattered mattress or just the floor. They're excited. They want to get that good night's rest and they wake up rested. I've had so many moms tell us, wow, I was able to get up and cook breakfast because the kids slept in. <laughs> we have this nice routine now. They sleep in and I can get a few extra chores done and get breakfast ready. And they're not, you know, tired for school. They're ready to get up and go for their day. What's the average uh, age of the child that you're you're serving? Well, we serve um, between the ages of two and 18 years old, because even an 18 year old is still, um, you know, needed in need of a bed. They're getting ready for college and we want them to be able to have that bed if that's what their goal is to take off to their dorm room or whatever it is they may need it. Or if they're decided they need to go into some type of a job to help assist the family, we want them to have that bed as well. But so that's our age group, two to 18. No, that's good. And obviously the work that you're doing, Annalisa, would be impossible without money and resources. Obviously you need time and energy. People have to come and assemble the bed, but you have to buy all the materials to, to, to be able to do the work. And I believe we, we talked offline, it, it costs somewhere around $250 um, to produce one bed for, for a kid. Um, you've got a big campaign coming up. You're going to try to put together beds for 50 kids. Tell, tell the audience a little bit about that campaign and, and how they could get involved with it. So I am super excited uh, for this campaign, um, Algernon, and thank you for being a part of this with us and um, our partnering with Spark. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a call out to the community. Um, if, if, if one person could provide one bed, it would be $250. If we could get 
50 people is our goal. We want 50 beds. We want to provide 50 beds for 50 kids. We have a waiting list and we want to be able to get rid of this waiting list. We want to be able to say that now that school started, every kid has a bed and we need the help of our community to do this. We are going to have uh, bed bill day on October the 16th. So we have to have this goal completed by that date of October the 16th. And the way you can help sponsor one child and one bed is by going to our website, which is abedinabook.com and go um, to our donate section and you can donate through PayPal or um, directly through your, your card, Visa, MasterCard, whatever is your preference to help um, sponsor one bed and one child. Yeah, and I strongly encourage um, every member of my audience to, to, to do that. You know, this is a campaign that I've also gotten involved in, and um, I'm, I'm personally going to be helping to, to sponsor at least one kid for a bed and um, encouraging so many of you others to, to do the same. And um, want to also make sure we thank our, our great mayor, Alan Jones, um, as normal. He's always doing the work of bringing attention to, to, to these kind of things. And, um, and a lot of times, you know, I like to say this just sort of a plug for Mayor Jones. A lot of times he's doing this work and doing things in the community a lot of people have no idea about and he he's doing it personally like it's not just something that he's trying to tell other people to do he's like actively involved in it and that's the way I discovered this program he just happened to he, he didn't mention it to me because he thought I should run out and do something about it he, he mentioned it because he had just gotten through building a bed and he just happened to share it with me and and obviously um, you know, I caught the vision and, and have gotten involved. And But so many times our mayor does that. And, and so many times, so many people in this community, we have such a great community um, full of people who will open up their hearts and open up their, their wallets and their, their bank accounts and, and give their time and energy to help so many people. And at the essence, when I talk about being locked in, that's a part of it, being locked in on your community, understanding your talents and your energy and being able to give back to your community is, is so important. And so, Annalisa, we also thank you for what you're doing um, to, to lead this effort. For my audience that might want to get in touch with you, um, either because they might want to make a donation, they want to get involved, or, you know, could, could be someone listening today that, that needs a bed. Um, how, how do they get in touch with you? So you can also, if you want to volunteer, you can go to the same website, abedinabook.com. There's a section for volunteers to sign up. Um, there's also a section to refer a child. Please, if you know anyone who has children and they're in need of beds, we want to help them. We want to, to help that family. We want to meet that family. That's a great part of this too, is about you know, meeting new people in the community and, and people you know, learning each other who may have never had an opportunity to know this other person uh, without this connection and this platform. We're so thankful and blessed for that. So also there's uh, um, on our website, a place where you can refer a child. There's a referral form on our Facebook page. It's the very first page post we keep that locked in as our first post um, so people can quickly jump on and refer a child and if you don't aren't a form person and, and you're more comfortable in an email format you can email us at um, a bed in a book um, at gmail.com that's awesome I encourage everyone to learn more about a bed in a book and um, also keep in mind between now and October 16th um, a bed in a book is running a campaign. We, we want to give 50 kids a bed, um, and that's going to take 50 people to sponsor those kids at 250 a, a, a bed. So um, e either get in touch with me to find out how you can get more involved. You can go to the, the website like Annalisa just described. You can get in touch with her directly, um, but that's 50 kids between now and October 16th. We want to be able to give a bed. Um, so that's a very, very important campaign. I um, want to make sure I thank my audience as always for joining me. Thank our sponsors for making sure the show happens. It would be impossible without them. Always want to thank WTOB. Make sure you stay tuned to WTOB every Sunday morning. Um, that's your opportunity to get locked in. You can also check out our other show, Eat, Drink, Triad, if you want to learn more about the restaurants that are here in your backyard. Um, and then make sure you stay on the lookout for my restaurant pick of the week. That's on WTOB every single week. If you happen to miss the show on WTOB, you can always grab it on Apple, Spotify, Pandora, wherever your favorite podcast is. That's where you can find Locked In with Algernon Cash. You can also keep up with me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. As always, until next time, y'all stay locked in.